Hey everyone, Sir Terman here again. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving yesterday. I took some time off to be with my family, so that's why we didn't have any videos last night. But today, we're back with some videos, and today is going to be Timo Kale, and this is actually a standard deck. I've been showing the Turner a lot of love over the past couple of weeks, so we figured let's go ahead and pay our friend Standard a visit, especially because tomorrow we have the last chance qualifier for Worlds competitors that want to be able to make it to Worlds, and it is in the standard format. And I think this is a deck that actually could be very good, and you might see people play in that in that world's in the last chance qualifier but anyways this is timo kale and pretty much it's just a Jodo deck you kind of have seen something similar i played a Natsus bando city variant of this before where you have paparo and just have a bunch of Jodos. this is pretty much the same idea i said that we play target for to give us access to solani as an alternative win condition and even kale as well right and also give us some answers with like the hush and the pell cascade to keep our units alive so this is really going to be just floating the board with all these poor uh, with all these jodos attacking into the opponent's nexus and eventually if you haven't killed them by then you just play solani and just win the game from there so hope you enjoy the game coming up soon if you do make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us we post a lot of videos every single day enjoy the games in this match we're gonna against Shen and Jarvan. Okay, so all the barriers are very annoying, of course, right? Um I'm gonna tell you what. I need to, I need to look for Jodo Captain and I need to look for Paparo. The Pytos is also really good, right? The Pytos lets me kill their 2-1, and this had Jodo Captain. So the Pytos lets me kill their uh their 2-1, the uh, their 3-1 that gets barrier. Unfortunately, our hand is not really the greatest, right? We we don't have like Mayor anymore. We don't have Paparo. Uh, the opponents, I guess, is also not playing a lot of stuff right now. We have another Timo, not really doing much for us. Um, yeah, you shouldn't attack here, right? Like you should not attack here. I'm I'm, I'm actually debating this. Uh, I'm really debating this blessing of target, but unfortunately for us, we just didn't have any value, right? So we'll go Jodo Captain. Want to join my party? And this is a really slow hand, right? Because we don't have we don't have the things that we're looking for. We don't have our Paparo. We don't have our things that let me just go wide. Now we could play Kale here. Let's just play Kale here so that when the Teemo dies, we get to advance our Solani. Assuming that the opponent kills this Teemo right here, I want to be able to advance the Solani. Now, the opponent could technically here be going for... Uh... No, I think I just block here, right? Hmm. So now you get to do... You, you get to lose your Badger Bear? And again, the kill dying is okay with me. Opponent could have another barrier to protect the Shen from going down to 1 HP. If they have the second single combat, I guess that also works out for them. They can kill this Jodo Captain. Form up gets the, doesn't get them to kill Kale, so I still get to push damage. Okay, so yeah, we, we get to kill the Badger Bear, which means that my Teemo now gets to go through, and I'm okay with that. Uh, we can also just go pastry on the Shen next time to start with. Yeah, let's go here first. Force the opponent to have to have a form up or something. So now this is forcing the opponent to have to have a form up or another barrier that they have to use right now with like no, really no effect, no value. Now you might be thinking it might be worth it for us to go for the hush here, but I actually think it's more correct. Uh, it's better for us to just go like super wide and at this point just try to get this solani just try to get this solani to a good position now very uh, actually i should have picked the poros right i should have picked the poros i don't know why i picked the hush uh the one is telegraphing here the shen spell right so what if we just pass what if we just pass and we just go hush hush to stop shen from doing anything I should have definitely picked the Poros. If I picked the Poros, I would have gone all in for the attack. Yeah, so this is cute, right? 
so this is cute. Um, how do I want to do this, right? Because I have to block. I'm going to have to push this. I'm going to have to block this, but this is not going to have barrier. Opponent tapped out. Do I need to have both hush, or can I just afford to just go like this and just keep one hush? I think I can afford to just have one hush. I don't think I need to have the second hush just yet. We can block, block. Our wills align. Get rid of the Shen. We know that the opponent has the Shen barrier now, uh, has the Shen spell, right? So we can go like this. Uh, I didn't play around form up here. If I wanted to play around form up, I should have blocked with one of my other units. The opponent got a single combat, I guess. And yeah, they go for the single combat, which lets them kill the Conchologist and keep their Shen alive. We're getting closer and closer to this girl coming down, though. And that's where the opponent has to kind of watch out for at this point. Like, I think I can just afford to relax. Honestly, let's just give them the team up. And play the second team up. We're gonna go like this, play this second team up. Next them play Solani and just have a big attack with Solani. We even get a third team up. Unfortunately, I, I need to have cards that I can actually play with Solani, right? If the opponent is not presenting lethal here somehow, I might just keep my units back. So this is 4, 8, 14. I guess they are going to present lethal, right? They're going to have the Shen spell and try to get the Shen spell that way. Yeah, so they're going to try to have lethal with the Shen spell. If we go like this, the, point, the problem is that the Shen spell lets them just swap, swap. And then have the double attack. If we just play Solani without any other unit, I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be enough if we just play Shen, if, we, if we just play Solani with no other units. I think I need to keep at least one unit on the field. So this takes me... Yeah, opponent's going to try to get a double attack. And then we're just going to hush it, right? And now the opponent's only pushing eight. Um, we play Solani and hope that that's enough. That doesn't matter to me either, right? Yeah, because we're just going to play Solani into Timo and... 18 with this i guess you could have a single combat here if you have a single co actually we can get we can get to 20 even if we wanted to i'm gonna even throw the teemo down so that the opponent has to block this teemo and get this girls even higher yeah so then we go like this is there any way for them to kill solani i guess it's a, i guess there's ways for them to kill my other units right yeah, I guess there's ways for them to kill my other unit, so I think we just go here. If they kill this Teemo with the Baggy Bear, it just makes my Solani's 22. That's still lethal. Because they don't want to they don't wanna block the Teemo. Because if they block the Teemo, it's just buffing them up. Yeah, it's still lethal because these girls are way too big. Yeah, that's still lethal because you give me plus two, plus two in each one. No, no matter which way they do it, it's gonna be lethal. That's why I say you just play for the Solani and then they won't be able to really do much about it. But I needed to have at least one unit to make this work, right? So that's why I kind of took the risk of blocking everything except for one unit. Uh, if I decided to leave two units open, opponent could still potentially kill me with that second barrier that they had. So GG. In this match, we're going against Bar and Nora. So kind of just making their units pretty big and kind of going from there. The captain is nice. Do I just play? Do I just play on curve? I'm gonna just probably. I'm gonna play on curve. I'm gonna just play on curve and just try to put pressure into the opponent. Uh, okay. Now that we got this, I think I'm actually gonna play commando first. 
and just keep this as a way to kill the Nora if the opponent actually attacks into us. You can you can get one of them, right? So now we go Commando, and we're able to actually kill that, that Reef. If the opponent attacks into us, they decide not to. I'm going to open attack. I'm going to open attack and force the opponent to give me the Alcat. If they actually don't want to block here. And if they block here, we're just going to go Pytas. Okay, I guess I didn't play around the second skip, right? The second skip would have been a big deal. Let's just go like this. The second skip would have been a big deal. Okay, well, you know I have Pell Cascade, so I'm just going to Pell Cascade here and force you to use the second part of it to kill her. I like I like taking the pastry out of them. I like taking the pastry out of them here. Mr. Triff. So this is going to force the opponent to have to use the pastry right here. And then uh, I can play Captain, Captain, and then Teemo. And have this big 3-3 three, three Teemo that the opponent's going to have to watch out for. Okay. Hello. You know I have it, right? The opponent knows I have it. You can go ahead and do this here. They don't go for it, so they're letting this commander stay on the field. I'm not going to block that, because I don't want to. I don't want you getting the portals just yet. I guess I probably should have blocked it, to be honest, now that I think about it. Uh, I don't know. Let's go like this. Let's just let's just go with these captains into this team and just have my units become so big that the opponent's going to have a really hard time dealing with them. Yeah, we'll go like this. Opponent can go ahead and block this if they want to, but then that means I can go pastry into the king of the reef and get my mayor back. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put this team on that. I'm just going to attack here. Again, I want them to block this, right? And they kind of have to because they don't want to give me the Alka. I guess they could have a Pi Toss. Cosme Binding, all right. So the year to kill the Commander, but I still have this Elusive. I think at this point, we are going to start looking to block their Construct so that we can just build up this board that we can just attack. Because my units are going to be all so big. The other opponent's gonna have a hard time getting good blocks, even if they have their stuff here. Now, to be fair, they do have all this shine, so they probably have some units that are really big. And there you go, they have the Living Library, which is humongous. Let's go Joro Explorer here. We could just take that five damage from the Living Library. Oh, we can just kill it right now. I kind of like, like just taking the damage, right? Because we the opponent the uh, the pa the paporo means that the opponent actually um God, that's kind of cute. That's actually kind of cute. That's actually very cute. <laughs> um, now to be fair though, I will go ahead and just open attack here. I think. So yeah, this goes up to four. So the opponent's gonna get punished by the living library. Do we ever put Tiny Spear anywhere? Probably better to actually go Tiny Shield. Let's go Tiny Shield and we put it right here on the Squire. That way the opponent has no good blockers. That's a, that's such a good one. But uh, I think it's going to be later on that we'll do it. Let's go like this. Like this is what this deck can do, right? Like opponent has a hard time getting good trades here. They will have the portal now going forward. We'll have this commando to still give us an elusive blocker. Opponent has to literally sacrifice their whole board here. And it still takes 11 damage. And then we're just going to slowly get get on top, right? I guess they could have here another Cosmic Binding. And that's exactly what they do. So they get to kill one of the Yoro Captains. Eventually, we also just draw Solani and just get there. Uh, so we can go commando here. That's cute. And uh, you know what? Let, let's just put the scale down. Let's just put the scale down. Make it so that this can block the Nora. And then next time we just open attack again. Now we can actually kill that King of the Reef as well and get our mayor back. So the opponent's units are big, but my units are also very big, right? Like, they have the bar. Okay. 
So the bar is a little bit annoying, but uh, let's just go like this. Let's just get my mayor so that I can get more value in my hand if I run out of value. Uh, they cannot attack with Nora because they run into the commando. And uh, they're in a position where they still have to attack into us. Well, I guess they shouldn't attack into us if I'm if I'm being completely honest. Okay, attacking into us is a mistake. Because you know, you know I have this mayor in my hand. So you know I have this mayor in my hand. So you know I'm just going to get value here. Um... So now I'm just going to open attack again. You have to get both portals here to survive. Shine and not a single portal. So yeah, we just go like this. The kill levels up. You have to kind of block everywhere. Mini morph, okay. So the mini morph gets to save you for another turn. But you're still taking 13 damage here at the very least. And you have to sacrifice your bar and your Nora. Let's see, let, let's say that they block, they have to block all three of these, right? So this is 13 damage here, even with the mini more. Unless you have another way. Yeah, you have to block the 7-5, my friend. Yeah, so you lose bar, you lose Nora, you have two portals, and we still have a bunch of units to get. If we get another pin, we can just kill them. We still have this elusive, so even if the opponent gets value, we might still be okay. The mini morph is always so annoying. <laughs> always so annoying. Let's go explore's blunder just in case that we need to. Uh, if the opponent gets another Nora, we can pop the the elusive away from the Nora. Okay, that gets us there, right? Yeah, that gets us there. There you go. If we find another ping, like I said, we were gonna just run, right? So it's just too much pressure, especially when you have the Yoro Captains and Paporo there. My units become so big attack wise that it's hard for them to to deal with. So in this match, we're going against Karma Set. And in my experience with this matchup, you can actually find like a, enough aggression to kind of just get over all the removal, right? Um, and, and, and honestly, I'm down to keep the commando, the Timo, and the mayor. Because the opponent's gonna have to remove one of these two units, and it's usually the commander that they have to remove. But the mayor lets me just kind of refill my hand, right? Now it is gonna be a little bit slower in this matchup right here because we didn't get the Paporo or we didn't get the uh Joro Explorer, so my units are not gonna be as like hurtful into the opponent. But we did get the Joro Captain now, so I guess that ends up working out. Opponent decides to draw. So again. They usually only have one Mystic Shot. I mean, if they have both Mystic Shots here, then that's fine with me. We'll go ahead and just go for this like this. If they have Mystic and High Note, that's fine. Uh, they have both. That lets me play... So... I think... No, I think I still like the Mayor into Teemo, right? I guess we can go Explorer... First... Timo is going to die no matter what, because the opponent is going to have access to, uh, like, a Mystic Shot or something, even if he gets an extra health. I kind of want to leave this Mayor to be bigger with the Captain. Yeah, so let's force the opponent to have a way to kill this Captain. So, we, we just saw two Mystic Shots, right? There's the Hino. Opponent has no way to kill the Captain, and by putting this Timo first, opponent ends up giving me value towards the Solani. And now this is where the game starts, because now everything I play is going to be buffed up. Uh, we're going to go Tenor, because obviously the Tenor is going to be much better later on. It, it does mean that we don't get value from the Mayor, but that's fine. We're going to go from Colleges. Hungry Alka. Hmm. Or Heroic Refrain. I might actually choose to go for the Heroic Refrain here. That's their set. Now... This is a little bit annoying because if I attack here, the opponent's gonna have the set and it's gonna be able to challenge my I mean he's gonna be able to challenge my stuff next turn anyways. If I had the Yorolus, if I had the if I had the Paporo, I probably would do it. Do I need to push seven? Do I just need to push the seven and let them do whatever they want? I think so. I think we push the seven. Start working towards the Solani, start putting them low enough. If I just pass there, I'm never gonna win this game. 
I have enough ways to restem uh, to, to repeal my board between the mayor and the tenor, but losing the Yoro Captain is definitely gonna hurt, right? Like losing this Yoro Captain hurts, but we do have the explorer still, so we can still go here. Um Pioneer, okay, so next turn we have enough for Pioneer plus uh, but then again that's not really a Poro, so I might just go Protoporo here. Yeah, and then we go tenor. And uh, yeah, opponent's gonna have access to this temple, which is gonna give them value, but the opponent's kind of running out short on cards too, right? Now we have two options here. Hmm, this is four. So if I play this, I still don't have enough. Let's just go Protoporo first, see what the opponent does. And then we go Kel. I like the Kel. This is gonna make sure the Solani is gonna be uh, it's gonna be buffed up. And if the opponent taps out of the way to deal with Solani next turn, we can just play Solani and just kind of win the game. Uh, the Kale is also gonna level up, so the opponent has two things to deal with. If they commit here for killing the Kale, so after shot plus Mystic shot, then sure. I just have to hope that they don't get the recall, right? Like the tag out. The tag out is what really stops Solani from being an effective threat against the opponent. The cool could they level up set high no high no. Okay, so yeah, so they have to block. By doing it this way, they actually don't have to the kale doesn't level up anymore. So they did it in such a way so that the kill wouldn't level up, but they still have to block the scale because the kill is 9 damage. You can't take 9 damage. I, I understand you want to get the favorable blocks, but you cannot take 9 damage here. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot take 9 damage here. Tag out? Seeing this tag out here makes me better suited for this Solani to stay on the field. So the, the set stays, right? But look at this. Opponent's gonna play set, and then they're not gonna have enough mana for a second tag out, which lets my. Actually, they can't even play the set because they lose the set to the Sunken Temple. I also like the Sunken Temple means they're gonna hit this stuff, right? Yeah, we just we just play Solani, and the opponent has to deal with Solani or they lose the game. Sure. You have to have a four mana tag out. If you don't have a four mana tag out, you're losing the game here. Okay, still needs to be a 4-mana tag out or killing my units. Or you got the 5-mana tag out. Oh, no, that's not it. And you draw some more prop cast for us. Again, like the Solani just becomes such a big threat against them. And we were able to push enough damage throughout the game that the opponent cannot really do much here, right? So here we just open attack. We can even go tell stones to make this even bigger. And that's the game. Yeah, we can just go like this. Uh, let's even go Pell Cascade. And that's game. So each one of this is a 1919 Overwhelm. The Kale herself is also 15. And uh, I don't think opponent has enough to actually stop this. And even if they do, it probably has to be like Rico Stun Stun. With the Sunken Temple, they could have enough to actually stop this, right? But. The way that they do it is going to be like multiple stuns, right? And they will use one tag out, which means that the Solani still stay on the field. And it's still going to be the same thing happening again next turn. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Lissandra and Bolivar. So, a more control type of deck. Um, I think we can just really just have a bunch of damage, especially with a power on the field. Yeah, I think I, I kind of like this this starting hand here, or and even Teemo as well. Okay, I guess I have to be careful about Avalanche on turn. Eh, I guess I do have to be careful about the Avalanche on turn um, on turn three, right? So you just have to be a little bit careful about that. If we go ahead and play the Paparo, then it's too easy for the opponent to have an Avalanche to clear my whole board. Um, I just open attack. Them drawing a Puff Cap there is actually pretty good. 
If I just open attack, I'm really just pushing three damage. Uh, two damage, sorry. Which doesn't feel like a lot. If the opponent plays Soul Harvest here, I still have to worry about potential Avalanche, right? But I guess at this point, because 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 I'm only pushing one damage, I think I'm down to just eat up the Avalanche right here, right? If you if you have the Avalanche, go ahead and do it. Yeah, if you have the Avalanche, let's go ahead and do it. Um, this is tempting, but it's gonna be really hard for me to actually get this enabled. I think I actually like the Stone Stackers better because he has three health. If you have Avalanche, you can stop all the damage here. The fact that they use the spell last turn also stops them from being able to ramp with the wild mysticism this turn. So they can only really ramp with um, the other stuff, right? I, I don't want to attack there because obviously we can just kill them with a Pytas, right? And just set up for an attack later. We can go stone stackers. Okay, I guess the point is going to go pioneer. Hmm. Uh, this is a little bit annoying. It's the, it, it lets them kill my Teemo. So I, I, I'm gonna let them kill the Teemo. Because maybe they get greedy and pull this. No, okay, they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and pull the Teemo. So I guess I'll just go here then. I'll go like this and um I'm gonna say if the opponent has if the opponent has it that they have it, right? If they have the avalanche, they have it. Next time we have five mana, so we can play the stone stacker. Ah, uh, I would love to play one of these. Like, these units are all much better. Hmm. I guess let's go, let's go Lecture and Goro. I, I would have loved to play one of these units instead. I'm going to go ahead and just play the Stone Stacker first. That way, if the opponent does have access to uh, Avalanche, I'm still okay here. I can still attack with this Stone Stackers. They can kill here, 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 and they can also kill their own blocker. I'm just going to disrespect the removal the whole game, right? Or do I just go for it now? I guess let's go for it now. There is a lot of damage. Opponent has to have ways to... I guess they could have like a... Um, harsh Winds and stop this damage. And then Harsh Winds and then Avalanche next turn to clear my board. That's fair. Oh, double ice shot. All right. I mean, I wasn't playing around that, but I don't think I care too much about that. He also keeps my stone stackers alive, by the way. And because we attacked before that came down, we got the value for the Solani. Yeah, because I think what I'm going to do here is going to be Yoro Captain into Yoro Explorer. I will the world. Yeah, let's, let's just go like this. Opponent should have killed this, like, but they tapped out of vengeance. So now we can go Yoro Explorer, we can go Commando, and we still have enough mana to play like the Lecho in Yoro, for example. Opponent has enough for... Okay, opponent has enough to actually play... Let the commerce commence. I guess they cannot play Bolivar. It has to be... This has to be something else. Let's go Commando first. Before this dies, so now this is gonna be in, in out of range of an avalanche. If the opponent has another ice shard and an avalanche, then that would be annoying, but I don't think I'm too concerned about this. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Lecho and Yoro into Timo. If the opponent plays nothing here, then I don't think I play the Timo, right? Like, well, I guess, okay, if they have the avalanche. I'm okay with that, right? If they play Avalanche now, then I have to attack because I, I have to play around a second Avalanche. Mm, I think I think you should have killed this guy. Again, I think I think opponent is getting a little bit too uh, cocky, so now we just go here and we just attack with everything. And you can block like this, but you're still taking four. Yeah, you you have you're forced to block here. Because otherwise you go down to one HP and then die to the pa to the pastry, right? If they will have block here, they will go down to one HP and then the pastry kills them. So it makes sense why they have to go for it this way. 
We have this big Solani on the field now, which is nice. Timo's leveled up, so technically the opponent could technically just die here with like a puff cap. I don't know that I want to play this pastry just yet. Technically, it could make it so that they die to a puff cap here. I guess I should have played it. I guess I should have played it, but I kind of like this Kale. Especially because now we have a second kill with the Divine Judgment. To make sure that we keep her alive, right? So, opponent also is only at 10 mana here. So, it's not like they have enough to play like something crazy. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Riven. Okay, so Riven, Cyan, and Samira. I, li I, I like what Cup is cooking. I like what Cup is cooking. Honestly, Cup, <laughs> Cup has always been good. So I, 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 I wanna see. I, I kind of wanna see what Cup is cooking here. I think I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna go Explorer, Mayor, Teemo. Right? Assuming that the opponent doesn't kill one of these right here. All right, do you have to get it? Do you have to get excited or the aftershock? No. Okay. So. At least, even if the mayor dies, I still get value from the mayor dying, advancing my Solani. Um, I kind of like the Wandering Shepherd better, but I do. I, I am. I was considering the Explorer. Okay, so there we go. We get to play this Teemo here and get at least to get value from the mayor, even if the mayor dies. And then next time we can just go captain and go second mayor. Or we can go second mayor first and go shepherd. Bonnie has no mystic, so I get to push some damage. This is a little bit annoying, so maybe that's a reason to go for the shepherd. If we go second mayor, we do have access to the spell cascade. A good draw. This is such a good draw because I'm down to trade my whole board with the opponent. Honestly, I'm kind of down to do this. If you if you want me to trade, I will trade with you. Because now I know that I can refill my board more than you can, and there's not a lot that they will be able to do against this. I say that, but the opponent gets a lot of value. They got rid of a blowback here. They got rid of a blowback. Um. Let's go Pioneer. That way we have enough mana for Pell Cascade as well as the um, the Pytos, right? So by going Pioneer, we can go like this. We have enough mana for Pytos and Pell Cascade, meaning that I don't have to worry about the Squire killing any of my units. Yeah, you go after the Teemo, and I'm just going to say whatever. If the opponent doesn't do anything else, I might just sacrifice the Pioneer into the Sun Dragger and just keep my Mayors alive. Yeah, let's go like this. Again, I'm going to force you to have to have things. And I actually think the correct play next turn is going to be Tanner. Okay. So they get to kill my Pioneer. We get to still kill the Squire. Um, I think it is Tanner. I think it is Tanner. We'll go Tanner here. Just push all this damage. At this point, I don't think I care about the Mayor. We just want to get rid of all their boar and be able to just push a ton of damage, get my Solani down, and just win the game from there, right? We have enough units to refill our boar. Absolutely. That's a good block here. That's a good block here, I guess. You're not going to block with the Sun Dredger. You're going to have blowback again. You discarded one blowback earlier, which makes sense. If you have two blowbacks in your hand, you probably don't have enough discard fodder. Okay, so they do have the second blowback. They kill the mayor. This is a good blocker into this dredger. I might honestly just put the shepherd on this tanner. Or I can put the shepherd on the explorer. That way when they, when this guy dies. Mm, sure, let's go like this. Anyone seen any sheep around here? That's way, that way when he dies, he advances our Solani. We have the refreshments, and we can get another refreshments now. Spitter, okay. I don't have to worry about the mic just yet. I guess we'll go like this. Uh, 
Yeah, let's go Pioneer again. That lets me play Conchologist into Solani. Again, at this point, we're just trying to level up our Solani, right? The opponent does say, I guess the opponent could have the... No, okay, I was going to say, they could have the Overwhelm Fragment. I actually didn't pay attention if the opponent actually used the Fragment or not. With 10, with 10 mana, I don't think... Again, I don't think opponent has anything, any way that they can kill this, right? Like, there's no... With, with 10 health, there's no way that the opponent can kill us. We just play Solani, and they go, we go for that, right? I think he knows. Cub knows what's happening, right? Cup knows what's happening, so there's no reason for him to stay because there's no way for them to survive the Solani. Because I put the Solani to the very right of my attack, and any other block that the opponent does is just gonna run into the Solani. So, GG. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Hope you all enjoy those games of Timo Kel. The deck honestly feels really strong. You saw us today getting all the way to 600 LP in standard, and the five games that you saw today are the five games i played and the five games i won i'm actually really considering bringing this to the last chance qualifier so we'll see how it go it feels really consistent and just being able to steal wins if you get it the, the right solani like even against the shen java player you just saw how nice it was for us to just push that damage through with the overwhelm just had these big solanis that the opponent could not do anything about and that's what makes this deck really really powerful uh in terms of strategy it's kind of like again you you have multiple ways to have your Jodos get buffed up or all your units your Jodo explorer buffs all your Jodos. paporo can do that as well and Jodo captain can buff all your units that are weaker than him right so it's not difficult for you to get at least one of your three engines that will allow you to start working towards the solani level up right so what i'm looking for is to try to play one of these cards in turn two or turn three or obviously turn four as soon as possible so i kind of want to mulligan for some of those engines right if i don't see any of those in my hand don't be afraid to mulligan your whole hand because it's really important for you to have these cards that can buff your other cards so that you can work towards your Solani level up in case that you're not able to kill them between turns five to seven, right? If the opponent is able to survive all your Jodel aggression and in general, you've been going very wide, then you want to be able to have the Solani as a backup. And that's why it's important to try to get her progress leveled up as soon as possible. With that said, I am mulliganing for, again, the Yoro Explorer, my Paporo, or the Yoro Captain. But early in the game, if I do get Teemo or Commander early on, then I want to play these units right away, even without the Yoro Explorer in, my, in the field, because I'm able to put in a little bit of elusive damage, right? And of course, the Commander even gets an additional unit, which is important for us to have that unit on the field, uh, to have that extra unit to, to keep our board as wide as possible so i want to just attack with my early units if i see them attack with my elusive especially just put some of that chip chip elusive damage in there and then prepare to just flop my board between the explorer the mayor the paparo and the euro cat and allow me to buff all these units the benefit the, the plus side of this deck is that your units get so much power when they get buffed by the explorer paparo or the captain that it's really difficult for the opponent to just be able to efficiently chump block them and that's what makes this deck really good because you make their chump blockers worse and then you're able to continue refilling your board over and over and over and just attacking a bunch of times so very fun deck very strong so if you want to try something new and you love this archetype make sure to give this a shot now before we sign up for today i have been on a work trip for the past week so I, a lot of the videos that you saw earlier this week were pre-recorded which means that i'm falling a little bit behind on kind of giving shout outs to our members. And we just had a bunch of members who hit the one month milestone and actually renewing our channel. So I wanna give a huge, huge shout out to Messi right here, as you'll see here on the screen. And I guess technically you won't be able to see all of them, uh, especially because my big head is blocking them. So Nitin, Ichimusai, Soren, Chika Jingo, Ashraf, Peter, Rain, Rain, Reynarta, Crimson Wolf, Brian Sasko, Jacosi Ten, Bob the Freak, Whiskash, Whiskers, and Seth Missioner. Thank you all so much for renewing your membership and continue to be members of our channel. Really, really means a lot to us. And additionally, I want to just give a quick shout out to Crunch My Nuts, who also rejoined our channel recently. Appreciate it. And also a Northern Dirt Stand, who's our last member that joined about eight days ago i was a little bit behind on giving shout outs here so again thank you all 
for becoming members of my channel. I really knew it. I really appreciate the support. You're part of the reason that we're able to keep this going and actually make this more of a reality when it comes to content creation. If you want to become a member of our channel and support us as well, you can find the link to that in the description below, or you can just click on the join button next to the subscription button. We have two different tiers, gladiators and champions, each one of the different perks. So you can check that out in the, in the description below. Otherwise, you can just uh, you can just subscribe to our channel. That's free. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at the term of machine every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow. And good luck to those of you participating in the last chance qualifier.